welcome to this session on best practices for incorporating gender issues in academic and workplace communication. When we say that we are going to focus on best practices, it also means that we are going to talk about how to avoid worst practices, that is practices which are not supposed uh, to be included in our communication strategies. Now, gender in STEM communication is something that is now recognized the world over as being very important. There is an enormous amount of research which has, which has shown the benefits of increasing gender diversity very specifically in communication related to science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And a lot of material has been produced in telling us why this is necessary, what kind of strategies need to be incorporated in including gender issues in communication and how to do it, that is the pedagogic aspects. We need to first prepare ourselves in dealing with these issues by making oneself aware of gender diversity issues in communication, because it is possible that one may without much thinking or blindly adopt these strategies for incorporating gender issues, but our communication practice will be much more effective if we are ourselves, that is you yourself are aware of the existing biases and stereotypes and how you yourself may be unconsciously carrying forward these biases in your communication. So, the first step here in making ourselves aware that is in preparing ourselves is to understand the difference between gender sensitive or gender fair, number two gender neutral and number three gender aware. So, gender sensitive is to understand that there are differences between men, women and third gender, that there are discriminations and inequalities between people of different genders in society. And therefore, since human beings consist of all the genders, how do we ensure that we are sensitive in addressing all of them in our communication. Gender neutral refers to the fact that very often we may not need to refer to the gender of human beings in our communication. So, when we are dealing with human subjects in our research or in our communication or we need to bring in human beings some way in talking about our research or in teaching in the classroom, it is not always necessary to bring in gender issues. In such cases, we need to know how to be neutral to gender issues, so that we are not unconsciously referring to one gender that is exclusively men when human beings constitute different genders. Thirdly, gender aware refers to the fact that because men and women may be different, because there is inequality between men and women or girls and boys, some of our strategies in communication need to explicitly acknowledge this difference. So, the example of the book that is presented on this slide tells us that we need to be gender aware in post disaster needs assessment and similar kinds of gender awareness is required in technology development, technology assessments and so on. That is, if we know that men's and women's needs or girls and boys needs are different, then our needs assessment, our technology development strategies, our assessment of technologies, our communication of uh, technology needs, all these can be enhanced, so that we address the specific needs of men and women, boys and girls separately and our own research strategies, our research impact is much larger. When we are saying that we need to be gender sensitive, aware and neutral in our language, we are saying that each of you need to be aware of the words you use, the words you choose, what are their meanings and what are their communication effects, which can be diverse for men and women, for boys and girls. Take for example, this first sentence. We are referring to Marie Curie, who is one of the few to have won a Nobel Prize in two different sciences. Hence, it is possible to say that Marie Curie is a great woman scientist. But why bring in gender at all? to refer to Marie Curie when we are talking about her research accomplishments. So, this is a case where we are needlessly bringing in gender where it is not necessary. 
nobody ever says for example that albert einstein was a great man scientist isn't it so referring to a person by her gender when that is not required is to stereotype certain kinds of professions and the work that people do so to say that to represent women primarily by certain activities that they do such as cooking is to bring in stereotypes likewise feminized nouns such as actress or sportswoman or businesswoman or chairwoman is also not acceptable because in all of these cases we are referring to the profession of that person we are referring to the work that that person does the gender is secondary here so why not just use the word actor to refer to the profession whether it is male or woman why not just use the term actor to refer to the profession of a person whether it is male or female likewise one could use terms like business person or chair person or sports person because in all such cases our primary objective is not to refer to the gender of a person but it is to refer to the profession or activity that a person is involved in in avoiding stereotypes you should never use terms such as woman doctor or lady doctor or male nurse or male secretary and so on because these are all reflections of society where men and women were allotted to certain professions again it is the performance of a particular activity it is a work that is important for us not the gender of a particular person some more examples of stereotypes which are to be avoided are given here so for example a term like faculty wife indicates that all faculty members are men which is neither factually true and in addition is also a stereotype so there are words available such as spouses which are inclusive and which uh, accept the fact that faculty members or people in any profession can be both men and women similar kinds of arguments can be made about terms like homemakers because a term like housewife is neither descriptively correct nor is it sensitive to the work that women do which is quite enormous in terms of the multiplicity of tasks that they perform so women who are married are not only married to men or married to a house they do much more in terms of child care and care of the elderly care of the sick uh, household cleaning tasks education nutrition and so on this is in fact reflected in a controversy that took place in a journal called the IEEE Spectrum where somebody who wrote an article about a microprocessor the article was titled with arduino now even your mom can program so this title appeared to be sexist and caused offense to many mothers because it assumes that mothers are basically uh, people without many skills so in an age where women are professionally as advanced and equal as men such kinds of terminologies are to be avoided so that they don't appear to be sexist and they do not put off or offend people who have accomplished so much in their lives despite several constraints generally we should avoid sexist pronouns or sexist nouns which is basically exclusive use of gender specific nouns and pronouns such as man men mankind he him and so on a general argument is that these are generic terms but a lot of research shows that these are male based terms which have evolved over a long period of time because men dominated society for a very long time in the history of human beings and they were doing most of the communication and therefore these kinds of communication strategies which are gender insensitive developed over a long period of time and these are not considered acceptable in today's more egalitarian world so a lot of solutions are available to avoid gender insensitivity and to become more gender aware neutral and sensitive or gender fair one can use pronoun pairs as we showed in some examples earlier one could use plural pronouns to refer to all human beings such as they their them and so on or if one wants to be gender aware one could use pronouns by specifying the gender such as male subjects or female pilots alternatives could be to use first person pronoun that is instead of referring to the gender when one is oneself communicating suppose you are yourself communicating instead of referring to yourself in third person as he or she you could refer to yourself as i 
Sometimes we can just bypass gender where necessary by replacing masculine or feminine pronouns such as he or she with a or an or the definite article the. Specific examples are available in the resources that we have made available to you which are at the end of this particular module. One could use a variety of substitutes that are available for male specific or masculine nouns. What we wish to say here is that it is not the non availability of terms that should be used as an excuse to continue to use male specific nouns and pronouns. So, you have a number of examples here where we do have alternative substitutes to refer to all human beings instead of using masculine nouns and pronouns such as common person, artificial for man made, humankind for mankind and so on. Let me just give you a few examples from academic communication. So, the first two examples tell us that the subjects that are being discussed in these articles are referred to as necessarily male. In the first example, it refers to his know how referring to an electrical engineer who may be both male and female. In the second example, it uses the term mankind. So, these kinds of examples, these kinds of terms are no longer acceptable in scientific communication in most professional journals and academic bodies. Moreover, as you can see in the third example, the exclusive use of man can also mislead. So, suppose we are interested as professionals, as medical professionals for example, in reading a particular article, but from the title alone we do not know whether the subjects in this article were both men and women and if I as a researcher am interested in female subjects, I will just avoid this article despite the fact that this article can be both about men and women. So, in terms of what I have mentioned earlier about the need for clarity in communication, this kind of an exclusive use of masculine nouns is simply unacceptable because it is ambiguous, it lacks clarity in scientific communication. These are further examples of how to avoid gender insensitivity in communication and these are as you can see from older articles and most journals now do not accept these kind of male specific terms such as man machine, man survival, yeast and man and so on. These are more recent examples as you can see and some older examples from journals where gender sensitive language or gender aware language is used. The first one knows is aware of the fact that the professional can be both men and women. In the third example, it shows how people can be both men and women, people who learn from media presentations and love to be entertained. In the fourth example, also the researcher is aware that a child can be both male and female. And likewise, in the fifth example, this is an example of gender aware language use where the DNA damage in non spoking men and women is referred to in the title. So, that a researcher is better alerted to the contents of this particular article merely from reading the title of this article. So, in general, many people continue to argue that mankind or masculine nouns and pronouns are generic terms, there is nothing wrong to use these terms. However, uh, increasingly, we are finding that such terms are best avoided, they are exclusive, they are offensive to many people. Like if instead of mankind, if we used womankind all the time to refer to all human beings. Hence, the use of terms like humanity makes everybody feel in included. Such sensitive terms ensure that our communication, scientific communication is has a greater impact. These are just a lot of examples of gender neutral nouns which can be substituted for male specific nouns or gendered nouns. As you can see even for technical terms we have come up with these gender neutral nouns like the example of the American Society for Mechanical Engineers which has come up with terms such as robotic aircraft for unmanned vehicles. These are further examples of how to avoid uh, gendered terms and the kind of alternatives that are available to us for a very large number of terms. Thank you, we come to the end of this presentation.